So the back leg is looking dodgy. All right, you better come straight through. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris is confronted with a shocking hit run emergency. What's what's her name? Bluebell. Bluebell. <gasps> Oh, no, Bluebell. Yes, yeah, she's a doctor from here. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Aww. Bluebell is just two years old and a regular patient at the clinic. What happened? You... Well, just basically someone knocked on the door and said that they found her on the road and did I know um, who she was? And, yeah, she's my neighbour's cat. She's got some cuts inside her mouth and obviously some pretty deep bruising around her, the side of her, her gums there. We found the last cat that they had and that had been killed on the road. So, um, yeah, I don't know why. It's outside our house. <laughs> okay, I just get a little bit worried when, it, when you see them panting like that. There's every chance she may have actually got some sort of trauma to her chest as well, and that may explain why she's having trouble breathing. What I'm trying to do is just try and stabilise her and just stop that panting. So if she can just get more oxygen around her body, then, you know, we buy ourselves so much more time. now has to break the terrible news to Bluebell's family. She's been hit by a car. No, no, she's not dead. OK. OK. you got permission to bite me if I do anything that hurts, because hurt right now mightn't be a bad thing. OK? Chris urgently needs to stabilise Bluebell, but his major concern is the lack of movement in the cat's back legs. Its back legs just don't have a lot of muscle tone to them. She doesn't seem to have too much awareness of where those back legs are or what, what they're doing. Was she meowing a lot? Did, you, did she seem in pain? No, she was absolutely fine. The fact she's not showing a lot of pain, it worries me more than if she was squealing out right now. Potentially, she may not have those messages going through, and if that's the case, then you worry that the spinal cord might have some damage. At Sash, four-month-old trainee police puppy Ken is in agony. I knew something was wrong because I'm on night work at the moment and he didn't bother me, he didn't wake me up. Went out to see why he was so quiet and I noticed a, a large lump on the side of his jaw. This is probably as close to a police dog's mouth as I'll ever get. <laughs> <laughs> he may only be a baby, but emergency vet Lisa Chimes is treating Ken with a healthy respect. Okay, that is really swollen. It's like a golf ball. It came up very, very quickly within six hours. And he's really lethargic and just yeah. not himself because he's 100 miles an hour. He never stops. Not a great sign. Mm. So let's just check you out. I'm a puppy tragic, I am. Yeah, um, I've been in the dog unit for uh, nearly 25 years and uh, in that period of time I probably would have had over 100 pups at home. You get very attached to them and um, it breaks your heart when you see things like that. Yeah. Okay, so he has got a fever. Mm -hmm. His temperature is 39.7 yeah. so uh, upper normal for him what I, I'd say would be 39 max. So, yeah. so that would explain why he's really not feeling very well at all. Yeah. So basically, I think what, what we need to do is admit him to hospital. I'm not going to know much until I actually can get a good feel. And he's so sore there, he just, yeah. he's not going to let me do oh, it without fine. sedation. That's fine. <laughs> now, you be a good boy now. I know, you be a good boy. Poor bugger. Ken is really sore and I'm worried he could have a nasty abscess and that could turn septic and poison his bloodstream. But what could be even worse is that he's got a fractured jaw and that would really put his police career on hold. Has she fit that tail at all? No, she hasn't. Hit run victim Bluebell is in a critical condition. Chris's major fear is spinal cord damage. The tail is controlled by all the nerves that are running to and from the spinal cord. So the movement of the tail is a pretty good indication of, of how that spinal cord is, is functioning. And the moment that tail of hers hasn't, hasn't moved an inch. Bluebell is no stranger to the Bondi staff. Two years ago, she was one of four stray kittens dumped on the clinic doorstep. I looked after him when they came in as kittens. And I I've looked after her ever since she's come in, every time she's come into board. It's one of those things, you, when you know so much about a patient like we do with little bluebell, it's, 
Yeah, it's, um, it's worrying. Bluebell's distraught owner, Grunya, has just arrived with her children, Rory and Amelia. Hi, how are you? I'm all right, thank you. Um, so, Bluebell, she, she's been, obviously been hit by a car. Um, she's stable. Mm -hmm. She's breathing relatively comfortably at the moment. What I want to do now is, is take some x-rays. I just want to make sure that everything in terms of her, her spine, her pelvis, everything that's important in that respect, I just want to make sure that, that that's OK. Do what you can for her. Yeah, no, well, she's a sweet cat, don't worry. Everyone, everyone here. Everyone here. that they know we're here, because that's yeah. where we got her from. Yeah. This x-ray is going to tell us a lot. The spine is what it's all about at the moment. We can fix a fractured pelvis, but a spine, it's going to be tough. I don't like this. I don't like this. Can you come up on the table? <laughs> At Sash, trainee cop Ken okay. has right. shocking swelling Let's on his jaw. Up. Poor little Ken is absolutely terrified, let alone painful. I mean, this morning he woke up and he was fine and then just over the last six hours this massive swelling has blown up and now he's feeling awful. It's terrifying for him. And that's really hard. <laughs> At the moment when I'm feeling it, I'm thinking it's an abscess. It's hot and it's hard and it's painful. Oh, my love. OK, OK. Oh, baby. All right, Bubsy. Have a nice rest. The next thing for Ken is for him to have a general anaesthetic. When you wake up, it will all be over. Allow me to have a really good feel of the area. I'm going to take some x-rays just to make sure that he actually hasn't got a broken jaw. So this is the swelling on the left side of his jaw. The good thing is his bones will actually look normal and it does appear that it's just affecting the soft tissues surrounding the bone. So I'm just going to shave the area and then we're going to stick a needle in and see what we get out. But if it comes out with pus, then it's an abscess and the only way to fix that is to open it up with the scalpel blade. Now, that's not the normal yellow colour you would expect with pus, say, in a pimple, but that's pretty chunky, and I'm happy that that is fluid from an abscess. If we don't open up that abscess, that infection is just going to brew, the swelling's going to get bigger and bigger, and Ken will just get really sick. She's got a pretty serious spinal injury there. That isn't a fracture. It looks like where you've got one vertebrae and you've got another one, just, the force of the impacts just pushed one up. At the Bondi Clinic, X-rays have confirmed Chris's worst fears about hit run victim Bluebell. That's the canal of the spinal cord sitting inside. Now I can't see how it can go there and then bend and come up here. That, that spinal cord doesn't bend. So how it is actually going there and then to there, I, I don't know. There's moments when Bluebell comes in and you're fighting to keep her alive. You have a little win in terms of stabilising her and then you get that x-ray and it just, it just like a big punch to the chest. She just sucks the air out of you because you, you know what it means. At Bondi, Bluebell's family are waiting for Chris to tell them the result of the x-rays. She's a very loving, gentle cat. She's chased every day by our dogs. We've got too many schnauzers and she just doesn't mind. She lies on the kids' beds and they, you know, jump on top of her and she just doesn't mind. She's beautiful. I'm just going to call up Sash because we need to organise a, an operation for her pretty quickly. Okay. Hospital, Chris is now calling surgeon Dr Andrew Marchewski for advice. I just had a cat brought in that was hit by a car and at L3, L4 there's a disarticulation, so a bit of a step. When you put your toe, does she complain about it? She doesn't look happy. But she's not demonstrably going, now that hurts, when you put your toe? No. Nah. Nah, that's a very bad sign. Yeah. Yeah. If they've got no deep pain and her chance of recovery with surgery is less than 5%. OK. Bye-bye. Not good. Mm. It's not good news. I'm just going to speak to 
Absolutely. Sorry that took so long. Um, I just took quite a few x-rays to, to know for sure exactly what was, what was happening there. So they're looking at, a, at about a 5% chance with surgery of, of, of getting it right. Okay. So it's not the news we want. No, it's not. And it's not. Of course, I'd like you to do everything for her, okay. but I also don't want her to be in any huge distress. Can we go and see her? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Hello, darling. Hello. That's all right, Blue Bell. Do you want me to do a pet? Okay. That's it, then. I think I know deep down what we should do. This is such a heartbreaking decision for Grunya to have to make. It's all about little Bluebell's quality of life and they love this cat so much, yet if she can't walk around by herself, let alone do cat things like keeping herself clean or go to the toilet even, it's no life. And so I totally understand the decision. Look, I'm home. I don't think she's coming home, no. They don't understand, they don't try to work it out, but there's just this innocence there that, that everything will work out all right. And in this situation, it doesn't. <sighs> Your emotions go all over the place. It's not only the family that suffers, it's the staff around here. Everybody that's cared for this cat, they know her so well. Everyone's beaten up by her. She's she was a part of this place for a long time. You right? Now that I know that Ken's got an abscess and that thing is filled with pus, the only way to treat it is to actually make an incision in it with a scalpel blade and drain it. Four-month-old police puppy Ken is undergoing surgery to remove a massive abscess from his jaw. What I'm doing now is I'm putting in a drain, which is basically going to keep the abscess open, allow us to clean it, allow that bacteria to drain out, because as soon as that skin closes over, the infection will start up again. Ken's drain will remain in place for three days. Now we're going to put him on a course of antibiotics and anti-inflammatories and hope that that heals up. Now you have a good night's sleep. Now you're going to feel so much better. It's not looking like a tough police dog right now. It's just a big baby. He's only four months old. I think everyone forgets that when you look how big he is. He is just a little boy. And then in one year's time, you probably won't be doing any more cuddles like this. You'll be chasing those baddies. Just a baby. Hello, gorgeous. Look at you. Oh, my goodness. This is a puppy. Just one day after having an agonising abscess removed from his jaw, apprentice cop Ken is back to his playful best. Watch out. Watch out, criminals. <laughs> you cannot compare Ken from yesterday to today. He is a handful. I can barely control him, and he is just behaving like a normal pup. All right, this is about as close as I'm going to get. The jaw looks a lot better as well. The swelling doesn't look as angry, and it's definitely less painful to touch, so I think he's on the road to recovery. Now you look like a cop. Look at you. Hi, Jeanette. Hi, Chris. What's going on? Here we are again. Hello, little man. At Bondi, a blast from the past has arrived unexpectedly at the clinic. Come on through. Okay, thanks. I walk out and I see Jeanette, I know her, but there's this dog with her. Is it Robert? Last time I saw Robert, he was this big and covered in mucus. You've been a bit nosy, were you? Huh? It's been two years since Chris helped Robert into the world. Today, the little terrier's in trouble 
after taking on a couple of aggressive Afghan hounds. That's not his whole pad, is it? No, no, it's just mm. the end of the band -aid. When I say that Robert's been taking on Afghan hounds, which are 10 times his size, he was taking them on through a gap in a garage door this wide. Brave? I don't know. I doubt it. The nail has actually been lost. So he's ripped out his toenail. Ooh. Yeah, which would be really sore. Yeah. So it's a broken toenail. It's incredibly painful, but the reality is it's not going to kill him. And let's face it, the toughest moment of Robert's life came right at the beginning. Give me a push, girl. Mum Bindi was in labour for 10 hours from 8pm through to 6am. That was an intense night. For me, probably one of the hardest nights of my whole veterinary life. Scream like you hate it. Come on. Despite all sorts of complications, we ended up with two healthy puppies, Robert and his sister Juliet. Oh my god, what a night. I what know. a night. Mm. Sure, you have your gut-wrenchingly sad days like yesterday with Bluebell, but as Bindi, Robert and Juliet showed me, you have your really uplifting ones as well. Are you shaking because of what's happened today or shaking because of the last time I saw you, <laughs> we might have kissed? Do you know that? <laughs> the kiss of life. <laughs> After a quick treatment of that injured foot, Chris's unofficial godson is ready to take on the world again. You think he's limping? He's not limping. What he's doing right now is just showing what he's going to do next time. Big left hook. You hit him, mate. <laughs> Don't hit him. He's a big, strong dog with attitude. Too much attitude. Lisa. Is this Ken? Yeah, it's oh, little God. Kenny. That's a medium sized Kenny now. Three months later, Lisa is summoned by the boys in blue just just to check up on Bruce trainee Ken and his surrogate dad, Tony. I was a little bit concerned that having an abscess on his jaw was going to slow down his training, but he's passed the first stage. That's a good dog. <laughs> you can see there's there's a look in his eye and, and a strength in that jaw that he is going to be a serious police dog one day. Do you want me to hold on? If you don't mind. No, he's, want, he's wanting to come with me. Gut feeling is he'll be like his father. An absolute terror on the streets. All I can say is look out criminals. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.